Hi, I'm Jimmy DeResta, and this is the first in a series of short videos, and in each video I'm going to show you a few tips on a particular subject. Uh, these are tricks that I've either invented or I've picked up along the way, and you'll keep them in your toolbox the way I have. This is the first one here, and if you want to join two pieces of wood, and for some reason or another you can't get the clamp on it right away, or you can't get fasteners right in there right away, I put a regular amount of wood glue on there, and then a couple little dabs of hot glue, Combine that, push that together, and then the hot glue keeps the joint closed while the wood glue dries. And again, later on you could put screws in here or you can clamp it together, but this gives you the ability to move on to the next phase of the job. Here's another hot glue tip. If you have hot glue sticks in your bag at an installation, but you don't carry around a hot glue gun, but you have the stick, you could just use a lighter to heat up the end of the hot glue stick if you have to do a quick repair or if you literally have to glue something to something else just keep the end of the hot glue stick going and then you can glue two things together on a job this has saved me several times over the last 20 years keeping a hot glue stick in my little tool bag just heat it up roll a little bit out and there you go If you have a hot glue joint, there's just a couple of examples of hot glue joints, and you want to break them, you could try and break them, but sometimes it might pull some of the fibers around it. If you want, get a can of computer duster, and you could freeze that joint, and it tends to break a little bit easier. You can see here, freeze that from the inside, and it cracks right off. Here's an example of a soft hot glue stick, and if we freeze it, it should snap just like that. So that's sort of what happens to the joint. This also works on some other types of glues, maybe epoxies, maybe sometimes crazy glue. It depends on the material that it's holding together. So try that sometimes. Freeze the joint and give it a quick snap if you want to release something. So talking a little bit more about this duster, I'm using it upside down and the Freon blows out when you hold it upside down. Of course you got to be careful you don't burn your skin. But using this Freon to get something cold works really good also when you're trying to cool off a hot glue joint that's taking too long to cure. Do that, give it a blast, and then you could move on to the next part of the job. So when you're kind of doing crafting or if you're trying to encase electronics inside of hot glue and it's taking too long for it to cure, give it a blast with that Freon. A lot of times when I'm running wires inside of electronics, and I would like to keep the wires in a certain spot. I'm waiting for that hot glue to cool off. It's slowing me down. I could just hit it with the propellant. And now I'm ready to move on. It's already secured in the spot. Be careful using this stuff. Use it at your own discretion. You know that it is dangerous. Here's another glue tip. Spike's going to help me with this one. Right, Spike? Whenever we do draw faces onto drawers that are in place in a cabinet while we're building them, I like to hot glue the draw faces in place until I'm able to get the screws in from behind or place the holes for the handles. So here's an example. I've already glued this one in place with hot glue. This is just a shop cabinet, so it's not quite accurate, but just to, ex but just to show the example of what I do. If this is my clean, perfect draw face, I space them apart. Sometimes with shims, in this case these are really wide shims, but I just make sure that I got enough area to get an even spacing around. Then I put a, a dab of hot glue and I place it gently until I get the airspace I want around it, and then I gently push it into place. And then the strength is provided from the screws that I will ultimately put in from inside, and then the handle with the screws that are going to go through the center here. If I need to get any of this more in line, I could either pull it tighter with the screw or I could shim it with a long thin shim. I could shim it, it'll break that glue joint and push it in or out. So that's all done, but the most important placement is just this placement inside of the frame. And so here you just see an example of that. Again, I would ultimately put handles on these, but this is just some examples to show you.